Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Sean and Pastor Danelle. Let's give it up for the pastors of this house, ladies and gentlemen. They are so amazing. So I think this is, I'm, am I the bookend for this series? We have one more? Okay. Okay, so we've been talking about the kingdom of God um, for the last several weeks. And I want to just very quickly recap on some of the key points that have been touched upon. First of all, we are kingdom citizens, right? We are all part of the kingdom of God. God is the king, and he has dominion, dominion over all of us, dominion over the uh, fish in the sea and the birds in the air and everything in between, right? So we know that we are in God's kingdom. God is everywhere, okay? He is um, everything to us. So in Romans 14, 16... We talk about the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And Pastor Sean spoke about pa uh, Matthew 6, 13. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Okay? So what I'd like to talk about today is the kingdom of God within you. The kingdom of God within you. And then we'll talk a little bit about tapping into his power. So we're, gonna, we're going to kind of dissect how the kingdom, kingdom of God is in you, but then we're going to talk about how you opera, operationalize it and how you demonstrate it. Amen? So the foundation text is coming from Luke 17, 21. Let's take a look at that. And when he was demanded, the NIV version says, asked of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, meaning here it is or there it is, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. I'm a teacher, so I have to teach a little bit. So where it gets a little tricky is because Theologians in their exegesis of this passage, some of them believe that the kingdom of God is within you. And so you'll see that in the King James Version, which is what you're seeing up here. But then in the NIV Version, it says that the kingdom of God is in your midst. It's among you. So they sort of, have the, and it comes for a couple of reasons, because when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, you guys remember who they were. So the Pharisees were, an, I guess, an enemy, an arch enemy of Jesus because what? They believed in the law. They, um, they basically felt that he was not the Christ. So they always tried to trip him up. They always tried to find ways to say, hey, you are blasphemy. You, you know, you're blaspheming and things like that. So when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, imagine they're all around him and he's having to basically prove himself or support his point, the Pharisees are sitting there like, yeah, right, you're yeah, right, you're yeah, right, you're yeah, right. So in the midst of that, he's having to say, you don't realize the kingdom of God is among you, meaning I am here, I am among you, just like I'm standing up here and I am among you, you're around me, okay? But then you have others who will say that the kingdom of God is not among you, but it is in you. It is in you. So let me talk a little bit more about that. The Greek word that is used for in your midst, okay, in your midst is entos. Entos means inside or within. So that's one of the reasons why it has been such a challenge because we're thinking if it's inside or within us, how could it also be outside of us? We're, we're going to talk about that. So Romans 14, 16, 20, as, we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier and as Pastor Donnell mentioned, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 says, do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? So if the spirit of God dwells in you and 
The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That means that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. Therefore, the kingdom of God is dwelling in us. That's so important for you to understand because people will challenge you. This is a point of, of, of um, lots of discussion in theology. So let's talk about, just in, in practical terms, how you can see this. We all have air around us, right? We need air. Air is around us, but we actually can't see the air. The only way you can see air is if the leaves start blowing, you know that air is here. It's invisible. We breathe in oxygen. The oxygen is coming from the air. We breathe out carbon dioxide. It helps the plants and, and grows things. This is our circle of life. It's the same thing. We have the spirit of God in us, and it's important for us to be able to breathe that back out into the world so that we can continue to advance the kingdom of God. And so as Christians, the kingdom of God is like our air. We have to have it. It has to be a part of who we are. So the kingdom of God, I just kind of summed it up in that it's, it's, it's a kingdom that's governed by God through the Holy Spirit, through the indwelling of the believer, and compelling him with new desires and affections. The converted person, when we became saved, we became converted kingdom citizens of God, right? We begin to change our thinking. We have a renewal of the mind. And once that happens, the work of the Holy Spirit can begin to happen in our lives. It can begin to happen within our, the kingdom of God that rests inside of us. So let's do this for, really, for a quick second. I'm going to ask, now we, we, I know that at some point we're going to have a choir here. Yes. Amen. <laughs> we're going to have a choir. So let's try this because I really want to kind of bring this point home. The kingdom of God is, I'm going to ask this group right here to say, the kingdom of God is, to the left. The kingdom of God is, loudly. The kingdom of God is. This group here is, so you're going to say, here. Here. The kingdom of God is. 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 Here. And now you're going to say, in me. The kingdom of God is 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 here. The kingdom of God is in me. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is in me. No, I, I, I think it's important for us to do that because I don't think that we, as Christians, are consistently thinking about that. We don't think about how the kingdom of God rests inside of us and also how much power we have within us because the kingdom of God exists inside of us. We're not tapping into that power enough. When we talk about the work that is done in them by the Holy Spirit, which is the last line that I read, what work is it that we're talking about? The work that we're talking about is exactly that, the demonstration of the Spirit and God's power. So when we look at 1 Corinthians 2, 4, and 5, it says, And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power, I added God's power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. If you are not witnessing the power of God in your lives, there's more work that needs to be done because he is working in us and through us on a regular basis, and we should be looking to experience that power. So God's spirit and God's power is what makes it clear that your life of faith is a response 
to God's power. Your faith is a response to God's power. Let's look at Philippians 3.17. When Paul, Paul here, he was talking about the fact that he lost confidence in his flesh. So he says, join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Because as you know, we're all on the stage of life. People are watching you. For I have told you before, and now I tell you again, even with tears in my eyes, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. It's so easy for us as Christians, to fall into that trap. It's so easy for us to think about earthly things. I remember back in 1994, there was a group, a hip-hop group called the Wu-Tang Clan. And the Wu-Tang Clan came out with a song. It, was, it basically said, cash rules everything around me, cream, get your money, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. Okay? For those that don't know about the Wu-Tang Clan, and I see the people that are smiling, I see you. I see you, okay? For those that don't know about the Wu-Tang Clan, what you did hear is that he said, cash rules everything around me. So there are a number of people in this world right now, even within the body of Christ, that their focus and their Lord and their king is cash. They say that cash is king. And so we are having to deal with that and combat that to make sure that we are portraying ourselves, we're portraying the kingdom of God that's in us and not what the world is portraying. Proverbs, 13, uh, Proverbs 16, 25 says, there is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. Some of the things that we are doing in our lives are leading us to death. But if you don't know the word of God, you won't be the wiser. You will not know that these things are the wrong things to do. Amen. So it's important for us, again, to as kingdom citizens to follow in what we talked about, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So we must set our mind on godly things. We have to be kingdom minded and we've been given the power to act with intentionality to do the works of the Lord. He gave us that power. And so it's important for us to demonstrate the power. We have to activate it. We have to actualize it. It's not enough for us to say, oh, I have the power inside of me. People need to be able to see the power so that they too can come to know the Lord. So I have, I, I can't help it, but uh, let me show you something. Look at this. It's not sharp. Look. Um, do you remember the cartoon He-Man in 1983? Wasn't that like a favorite cartoon? I love that cartoon. I, um, I, went, I, I went to Catholic school for the most part um, coming up, and I would come home 3 o'clock in the afternoon and watch He-Man. There was something about that cartoon that moved me. I never understood what it was. But there was something when he said, what is it, guys? By the power, By the power of Skull." Right? And then he takes it and says, I have the power. There was something about that that made me, in, that encouraged me and empowered me. Not that Shira came into the, into the mix, because she did, okay? But it encouraged me and empowered me to see someone who was just, his name is Adam, funny enough, and it, it, to see someone and to, and to see the transformation of that, of that person. So once he had the power, he took the sword and pointed it to his, what, little tiger friend, the tiger was trembling, and once he pointed it to the tiger friend, the tiger became a huge, fearless lion or a huge tiger. But that's what we have to become. 
We have to be able to say, I have the power, embrace that power, actualize it, and then pass it along to the next person. I, when I started thinking about it, it's almost like a Christian allegory, right? It's like an allegory is an artistic form that can be interpreted to, you know, for a different meaning. So you had Prince Adam. Then Adam, he carried a breastplate on, just like in Ephesians. He, he was pretty much dressed like in Ephesians 6. But on his breastplate, he had a big red cross on it. There were three people of significance in his life, the Holy Trinity. He had Skeletor that he had to fight, the evil forces. Jesus had Satan and all his minions. We have that. We, he had the sword. Again, the sword represents the Feast of Pentecost because when he pulled down the sword, bolts of lightning came out of it, which are tongues of fire, which transformed the fearful apostles into bold evangelists. Some of us are still waiting for that point to come, okay? Some of us are still waiting for somebody to point the sword at you and say, you have the power now. Let that be me today. But it should be coming from yourself. It should be coming from the inside of you. Because again, the kingdom of God is already there. So you don't need someone to point at you for you to be brave and bold as an evangelist for the word of God, for God. So the kingdom of, uh, the kingdom of God inside of, inside of us gives us the power to do four things. Defend our faith. It's very important that as Christians, we defend the faith. Jesus had to do that many a time. Fight off the enemy evangelized by the demonstration of work, and to live our lives in abundance and receive the blessings that God has in store for us. Um, here's a myth. I think, especially in, the, in, in Catholicism and some of these other um, religions, where the goal is to do all the first three things but leave nothing for ourselves. Like, we don't deserve to have blessings and abundance but, the, but Jesus says that we are to receive blessings and abundance and prosperity and good health and all of this. So why do we not feel that we can actually embrace that and have those things? Because Satan will have us to believe otherwise. And that's where we talk about, again, tapping into the power of the kingdom of God. So let's look at Matthew 10, 1 seven and eight. Matthew 10, one, seven and eight. And when he called unto him, his 12 disciples, he gave them power, power against unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. As ye go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven, which is the kingdom of God. It's synonymous. Jesus has actually used both in a similar passage. So they're the same. Is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely you need to give. As Christians, we have the ability to do those things. We have the ability to speak a thing and see that thing come into existence. Amen? So we know that we can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens us. So I have a video that I'd like to show you. Marathon Women's Champion, Cynthia Durham. Our page group leader. Christopher Ramirez out of Austin. Running in Austin, Texas. Nathan Poland coming across that finish line out of Austin, Texas. That boy, Nathan. Fantastic work. Spokane, Washington. 70 years young. She's got a half marathon in every state and on every continent. Come on, you Austin! Leanne Moore comes across 
Mark Ramirez out of Austin running in Austin, Texas. Nathan Poland coming across that finish line out of Austin, Texas. That boy, Nathan. Fantastic work. Spokane, Washington. Her name is Yvonne. She was 30 years old when she actually ran that race. And that was back in 2015. She led for most of the race. She was only 50 yards, which is 150 feet away from the finish line. Her legs, I don't know if you know anything about running, but her legs started giving out on her. Has that ever happened to anybody here? Like literally, her legs, she could not go anymore. Her mind, she had the fortitude to keep going, the strength to keep going, but her legs would not work anymore. But she refused to give up. She refused. Did you see the, the saliva that was coming out of She had an ugly experience. Sometimes in life, we have those kinds of experiences. It was her last two kilometers. She says, I don't even remember getting to the finish line. I just knew I had to get there. I knew that nothing would stop me, that I came here with a purpose. We are all here with a purpose. And we all have a race that we need to run. We are going to have times where things like what happened to her will happen physically to our bodies. And then we're going to have times where maybe it's a mental situation. Maybe it's a job situation that you can't find. Um, it could be a number of things that's happening to you. And then you say to yourself, why me, God? Why am I having to go through this loss of a, lo you know, loss of a loved one? not having support of your family, whatever those things are, they're going to happen to us. Yeah. I showed that video because her strength and her courage, I found out only later, came from God. She was a believer. She was a believer, just like us. There's going to be times where we have to get to that finish line because all these people are watching us. Now, mind you, did you notice the person that was behind her that was basically ha that basically had the little pusher, the wheelchair? She said, "No, I'm not getting on I'm not getting in that wheelchair because if she got in the wheelchair, it would have disqualified her from winning." Not even winning, but getting through. And that I guess it is winning cuz she's crossing the line. So when that happened, she basically said, no, I'm not getting on there. Her knees were bloodied. Sometimes we go through an experience and our knees are bloodied. Our elbows are bloodied. Everything's bloodied. It's one of those things that will hurt. She did that. Then you had the other people. So you had that one person with the wheelchair saying, hey, do you need some help? I can help you. Or is that person saying, hey, lean back on me as a crutch? It could be one or two or, I, you know, either one. Or you had the other two women that were like, come on, come on, you can do this, you can do this. We have people in our lives like that. When Jesus fell as he was carrying the cross, Simon came, just a random guy that they chose, to help him to lift that cross. So we are going to have people in our lives that are going to be just that for us. Those people that are going to help us to lift up whatever it is that we're going through. That's why it's so important as the body of Christ for us to really embrace our fellow brothers and sisters, the members of the body of Christ who have been put in our lives for times like this to help us to get through. Those times where you have to pull, you have to tap into yourself into the power that's within you that's the power that's given to us because we are kingdom citizens because God is within us we have that power so that's basically what that video is showing she didn't care about what people thought about her sometimes we find ourselves in a situation 
where we actually care about what people are thinking about us. Oh my God, what are they going to say about me? I really, I can't have them see me this way. I can't have them think that this is going on with me. But she didn't care. Did you see how fixed her eyes were on the prize? What is your prize? What is the thing that you are trying to reach? I don't care if you're 60 years old. I don't care if you're 70 years old or 80 years old right now. You have a prize. You're still trying to get there. That's why you're still alive. You still have a way to go. Don't think that it's over for you because you reach a certain age and now you have grandchildren and now, you know, you're figuring I retired. No, you still have time and you still have a journey and you are still in and walking through your journey right now. I want to encourage you today because you are put here. God put you here and put the kingdom of God inside of you for such a time as this. This is your time. That dash in between the <laughs> date you were born and the date you died, it means something. Yeah. Make it mean something. That's very important. Now, I had um, something else I wanted to share with you. And I, I, I actually, oh, I guess I could. I want to talk a little bit about immersing yourself because that is the title of, not the title, but that's what the Lord gave to us at the beginning of the year, immersion. And I preached in Santo Domingo in January. And during that time frame, I was talking to some pastors and some other ministry leaders, and we were talking about leadership and immersing yourself in the word. What we're finding is that if you do not feel that the kingdom of God is resting inside of you, because I know that there's got to be a few people in this room that's like, ah, I know the kingdom of God is in me, but I can't effectuate it. I can't actualize it. I don't know how to pull it out. And the way in which you do that is by immersing yourself in the word of God and by building your relationship with him. If you don't do that, you will not experience the power that we're talking about here. If you think about it, how much time do we spend on this earth? Maybe right now we say about 80 years, right? And within that 80 years, we are spending 600 something thousand hours. That's how many hours we have in our lifetime. But what are you doing with those hours? Are you finding time to spend time with the Lord? As a professional myself, I find that it's difficult to make the time that I would want to make to spend with him. But if you don't do that, you will not be able to achieve all of what God has promised and to, and, and to, bend, and to just receive his blessings. He will bless you, but you won't have the knowledge base. You won't have the, the, the faith. Your faith is a muscle. It will not grow. So it's important for you to continue to immerse yourself in the word, read your Bibles, and act on what God has given you. Amen? Amen. So finally, I just want to share about the prize. I want to read this to you. Paul says this in Philippians 3, 12, and 14. He says, I'm not saying that I have this all together that I've made it, but I am well on my way. I say the same thing. I'm not saying that I have it all together, but I'm on my journey, and so are you. Reaching out for Christ, he says, who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this. We are not experts. But I've got my eye on the goal. I've got my eye on the goal. Because guess what? We are going to fall. It's been said. We already know this. But if you keep your eye on the goal as you're going through this, you will be able to get back up. Where God is, and he continues on, where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. He says, I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. 
I'm off and running and I'm not turning back. It's so important for us to realize that as we're going along our way, we should not be looking back in our rearview mirror. That we have to keep going. If that young lady, Yvonne, would have looked back, she may have been discouraged. Because you know what happens when you're on your journey? There's people around you that are passing you. There's people, it may be your siblings, it may be your family members, they're passing you. You're feeling judgment. You may feel condemnation. You may feel less than. But if you just keep your mind set on the Lord and keep your path towards where he has you going, not necessarily that person, your friend, your spouse, your sibling, but where he has called you to go, I promise you, you will receive, you will reach your prize. You will get there, even though it may not look that like you will. Remember, the enemy is always there that what will attack. But you have the power to be victorious. You are an overcomer. So the kingdom of God is around us. It's within us. And it gives us the power to be able to bring the things to pass that the Lord has, that the Lord has put in our path to bring. Amen? Amen. All right. So now I, I guess I'll read the prayer of salvation. All right. Yes, amen. So, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that the separation between us is because of my sin. I confess that I have sinned and have fallen short of your glory. I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, to pay the penalty for my sin. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe that you raised him from the dead. I am sorry for my sins, and I ask you to forgive and cleanse me. I want to turn away from everything the Bible calls sin and receive Jesus as my Lord, Master, and Savior. Help me to love, serve, and obey you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen.